late night World War III update. So the UK is calling back some of its diplomats from Russia in response to the Navalny assassination. He was one of the primary opponents of Vladimir Putin and apparently a poster boy for the West. Is it that surprising that this happened during the Munich conference, which his wife was attending? Navalny, that is. Is it surprising that this is happening while NATO is beating down Western Ukrainian's door with their 100,000 troops? Is this surprising at the same time when Avdivka is falling? It's officially now fallen to the Russians once again. Bakhmut, Solidar, Avdivka, Mariupol. It's starting to look like Ukraine's not doing so well in this war. Budinov has threatened Russia with retaliation over poisoning his wife, insisting that thousands of drones are going to descend upon Moscow. This is where we're at. Yesterday, there was an attack on a Russian rocket facility in Siberia, way far into Ukraine. So you know that was an act of sabotage. Day after day after day, how much are the Russians going to take is the question. And now we have CNN stating the obvious that we talked about on this channel just a few weeks ago with Castle Bravo. Russia attempting to develop nuclear space weapon to destroy satellites with massive EMP energy wave, sources say. You would think that was a headline that you would read on Infowars or some equivalent fringe alt media site, but it's not. That's CNN. Okay, so this is where we're at. Russia is trying to develop nuclear space weapon that would destroy satellites by creating a massive energy wave when detonated. Now, there's something that people need to realize. Well, it's true that an EMP's effect in space, as was the case with the Starfish Prime experiments, when they detonated a nuke in outer space and it damaged uh, surrounding satellites in a very long range of sight. Fortunately, there wasn't a lot of satellites at the time. If something like that was done today, it would be completely destructive. Uh, all of our you know, telecommunications would be fried. I mean, it would be a total disaster. GPS, you name it. Now, what they're not telling people, and this is why what makes me suspicious about this, is that the Russians aren't just going to put an EMP or a nuclear weapon into space for the sole purpose of taking out satellites because they can do that from the comfort of their living rooms. They can launch a ICBM from the ground and while it might tip us off and potentially elicit a retaliatory strike, uh, they're going to get the same effect. So if they're putting a nuclear weapon into space, it's not just going to be one, okay? It's going to be several. And if you have several nuclear weapons in space, then you're setting up, or at least it would appear to us, to look like you're setting up for a decapitation strike because you're going to be utilizing those EMPs. They're not just going to have an effect on the satellites. They're going to take down the power grid. You do it over the East Coast, everything within you know a couple thousand kilometers of that epicenter is going to be uh, fried, basically. The transformers are going to fry. They're not built to withstand those types of currents. So this is the true purpose of it. Now, of course, CNN admits that the Russians are only thinking about doing this. And this is where the whole dissemination of this leak gets a little suspicious, considering that on the same day that it happened, we, in fact, launched uh, rockets into space, which are for the purpose of detecting hypersonic missile systems, so we claim. Now, it's become quite clear at this point in time, at this stage in the game in the war, everything we accuse the Russians of, we are either doing, thinking about doing, or about to do. And this could be one of them, in the sense that we said that the Russians were running out of weapons. We ran out of weapons. We said that the Russians were losing. It appears as though that the opposite is true. We said that the Russians' economy was collapsing. It appears as though Europe's economy is collapsing, okay? We said that the Russian was going to descend into civil war. And it appears as though we are descending into civil war. And the farmers are blocking all the passageways into the major cities in Europe. So everything that we're accusing the Russians of, that in fact is happening here. Now that's not to say that within the autocracy, the authoritarian regime that is Russia, where they are doing a serious crackdown on protesters right now who are protesting the death of Navalny. That's not to say 
that they don't have their share of problems. However, we should be incredibly suspicious when all of a sudden the government does us a favor and leaks some information about the Russians planning on putting nukes into space. Now, we're going to read this article, okay? And you be the judge of what exactly they're trying to say through. I say that you got to read between the lines. Russia is trying to develop nuclear space weapons, trying to develop. The Russians could have did this a long time ago. They are masters at making very small nuclear reactors that can be put into space if need be. And that is just the reactor, okay? So the Russians have many propulsion systems, nuclear propulsion systems, like on their missile systems, on the, uh, the thing that gets shot from the Belgorod, the Poseidon torpedo. They have this capability. So to put it into space would not be a huge stretch of the imagination. And this is something that has been contemplated for decades, as they'll say in this article. However, it's important to read between the lines. Would destroy satellites by creating a massive energy wave when detonated, potentially crippling a vast swath of the commercial and government satellites that the world below depends on to talk on cell phones, pay bills, and surf the internet. What? Is that what we use satellite for? Uh, satellites for? Cell phones? Paying the bills and surfing the internet? Surfing the internet? Do people still say that? That's the most pre-millennial thing that they could possibly say. CNN just totally dated itself. Look, if the satellites go down, not only is that going to be a precursor to imminent nuclear war, you're going to have a lot more things to worry about than just not surfing the internet. Try, you know, bank machines not working. Try, uh, yeah, I mean, all navigational systems going completely haywire. The telecommunications grid being brought to a halt. It's very likely that the power grid is going to suffer in turn. And paying bills is going to be the last of your problem. Ain't nobody going to be worried about, oh my God, the, the grid's gone down. It's Mad Max. I got to pay my bills to the government. That's wishful thinking, CNN. Sea sources gave CNN a more detailed understanding of what Russia is working on and the threat that it could pose than the U.S. government has previously disclosed. Republican Representative Mike Turner of Ohio, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, set off a frenzy in Washington on Wednesday when he issued a statement saying his panel had information concerning a serious national security threat. And by Friday, Biden came out and publicly confirmed that Turner was referring to a new Russian nuclear anti-satellite capability. They always say anti-satellite. If that's what they're saying, I'm guessing that this is either much bigger than that Either the Russians already have it deployed, otherwise they wouldn't make a big deal about it. They're trying to do their best, it seems, to inform the, pub the population without spooking the population. Because the last thing you want in the run-up to an emergency like this, as we're moving down the DEFCON ladder to DEFCON 2, is to have panic in the streets. In Russian culture, in Chinese culture, this is ingrained. This sort of uh, you know, preparedness culture is, is ingrained. And if they were to come out in Russia and say, okay, we got to prepare for nuclear war, there'd be a bit of a scurry, but a lot less so than there would be here. It would be total pandemonium here, like you never seen before. <sighs> Officials have steadfastly refused to discuss this matter further, citing the highly classified nature of the intelligence. Now, remember, this is on CNN. So now this is out in the open. This idea that Russia is planning on putting nuclear weapons into space is out in the open and they're openly talking about still pushing this spending bill through, still uh, having all these troops in Eastern Europe. The Munich Security Conference, security guarantees to Zelensky from Germany, from France. These people have lost their flipping minds. They sincerely wouldn't want nothing more at this point in time to take Vladimir Putin out, but unfortunately, that is going to leave the worst kind of power vacuum because you're going to get Medvedev, you're going to get one of Russia's generals, one of Russia's far more hawkish generals on the scene. And for all you know, they're going to be far more reckless uh, with their wielding of their nuclear power. And quite frankly, Russia's, Russia's uh, being pushed around. They're starting to seem like a bit of a pushover allowing these constant attacks on their critical infrastructure. So we should be thankful that they have the restraint not to cross that nuclear red line just yet, but that's what this is all progressing towards. This is why the UK is removing their diplomats from the country, because they're getting ready to do some crazy shit in Western Ukraine. The weapon is still under development and is not yet in orbit. 
So why even bring it up is the question. Biden administration officials have emphasized publicly, but if used, it would cross a dangerous Rubicon in the history of nuclear weapons and would cause extreme disruptions in everyday life in ways that are difficult to predict. Now, you know how they're talking to you like children because they're not telling you what happens after. Obviously, if Russia were to take out our satellites, we would have no choice but to respond in kind and we would likely, in fact, initiate a nuclear strike against them because if we have our capability to see what's going on completely destroyed, then the Russians could do a first strike and we would be completely blind to it and we wouldn't be able to retaliate. So in order to avoid that situation, we would strike first. So this is what they're not telling you. This is how you know that they're still patronizing us like we're children. And quite frankly, uh, looking around this place, I do not blame them, to be brutally honest. This kind of new weapon, generally known by the military experts as an EMP, would create a pulse of electromagnetic energy. So cue the Hollywood film about an EMP pulse. Would create a pulse of electromagnetic energy and a flood of highly charged particles that would tear through space to disrupt other satellites winging around Earth. And it would also destroy the power grid below. They're not just going to do one of these. Remember, they're going to do several. And it's not like their satellites are going to necessarily be immune to this. Sorry, I got a really uh, shanty uh, tripod going on here. And this is the first video I've done in the car in months. And that's saying something. Now, they'll say that, and, and this is where I think that they're, they're watching our, our channel with uh, Casa Bravo, because they're going to say in this article that, yes, it's true that satellites are mostly protected from electromagnetic pulse, at least the military ones anyways. However, there are certain vulnerabilities, almost as if they stole that excerpt directly, verbatim, from our YouTube video that we just did with Castle Bravo. Anything that they're doing or will do relates to satellites in space damaging those satellites potentially. So of course, there's a potential to damage their own ally satellites. So the only way the Russians are doing this is if they're going scorched earth, is if they are going for broke, if they think that all is lost, okay? Our general knowledge of Russian pursuit of this kind of capability goes back many, many months, if not a few years, John Kirby said. But only in recent weeks now has the intelligence community been able to assess with a high degree of confidence exactly how Russia continues to pursue it. How do they know that? How did they suddenly get this information? Are they listening in to Vladimir Putin's calls, one of the most air-gapped nations on Earth? How are they getting this intel is the question. Are there some turncoats within the Kremlin? Is this really a civil war in the truest sense that uh, Putin had stated uh, just a few days ago in his Tucker Carlson interview? The intelligence community, Biden said, had found out there was a capacity to launch a system into space that could theoretically do something that was damaging, but that it hadn't happened yet. It's very likely that either it has happened already and they're just scrambling and trying to inform the public without spooking the public, or they're just using this as cover for something else, which is a distinct possibility. It's not a new concept, as you say. This is something that dates back to the Cold War. The big fear with any eventual EMP device is that it might render large portions of particular orbits unusable. You think that's not the biggest issue. The issue is that it would trigger a full-scale nuclear war. It was not immediately clear whether the device was designed could impact GPS and nuclear command and control satellites, which operate in a higher orbit than the vast constellation of commercial... That doesn't matter. I mean, you put it, one of these in space, I mean, it's going to be able to reach it, okay? Because it doesn't have that attenuation of the atmosphere. These larger satellites are designed to be impregnable to a nuclear blast, but a not to the blast itself, but to the EMP effects. I'm presuming that's what they mean. But they could be vulnerable depending on how close they were to EMP, how old they are, and how big the blast. This is a last-ditch weapon. Experts say this kind of weapon could have the potential to wipe out mega constellations of small satellites like Elon Musk's Starlink. They ain't putting nukes up there for Starlink. They ain't putting nukes up there because the Ukrainians are maybe even leveraging Starlink to direct certain missiles. Yeah, that's not why they're doing this. They're doing this for the United States. This would most certainly be a last-ditch weapon for Russia, for us, because remember, we're the ones 
who just shot those rockets into space that are for the purpose of detecting hypersonic missiles. Russia has a new number of public debacles with their nuclear technology in recent years. In 2019, several, uh, seven Russians were killed in a nuclear accident that occurred while Moscow was trying to recover a nuclear-powered cruise missile. A lot of people don't know that there are nukes at the bottom of the ocean, nuclear submarines, uh, you know, nuclear weapons that went down. So, yeah, just uh, FYI. This is very, very strange that they're bringing this up right now. This is a sign that things are escalating behind the surface, if that wasn't obvious enough, that this collapse of Avdivka is more significant than perhaps they're letting on, and that this is going to be the trigger for NATO to go into Ukraine, and that that is going to create all kinds of chaos. we got the Russians planning on mobilizing another 400,000 troops before full-blown forced mobilization. So things are about to get real, guys. So take this time to prepare, okay? Take this time to prepare. Go and watch the last two videos. The last one was about AI. That's how they're going to get us all into our pods and keep us uh, complacent and satiated while the bombs drop. And you also are gonna wanna check out our video on subterranean warfare. It's part one of a three-part series where we talk all about how the most overlooked part of nuclear war is going to be the subterranean component how we fight world war three from the underground and it's a lot more vast and extensive than a lot of people understand thanks for watching guys stay safe